So as you guys know, my name is Ebo Nsua. Um, I was actually born in Toronto, but my family moved here to Claremont in 2001, and we've been here ever since. So technically, I consider myself a resident Claremontonian. <laughs> uh, I'm a product of the Lake County school system. Went to Mineola Elementary, Claremont Middle, and then Eastridge High, where I graduated and went off to Florida State on an academic scholarship. I eventually started playing football there, and uh, we won a national championship as well. And I was involved with a plethora of uh, student organizations and uh, companies as well. When I graduated, I, I went off to uh, Washington, D.C. and uh, started working in policy on Capitol Hill. And I worked there for about two years until I became a legislative aide for um, Congressman Ron DeSantis. Uh, afterwards, I decided that I wanted to come back to my community and I wanted to give back and I wanted to be more involved in, in the local scene. So that's why I decided to come back home. So what I did was I, I joined a plethora of, uh, of boards, including the uh, Lake County uh, Library Advisory Board and also the Planning and Zoning Board for the City of Claremont. And I'm also involved on a, a few other boards for some local nonprofits as well. I'm currently an educator and I will be starting this fall my first teaching, teaching job over at Mount Bird Academy and I'm super excited, a little nervous, but that's to be expected. And I'm, I'm ready to get to work, to, get to work for my city and I'm, I'm ready to take that opportunity. Yeah, so for me, I mean, Claremont is such a, such a great city. Uh, we really are lucky to have it and we haven't seen anything like it in a very long time. Um, you know, my, the goals for the city should be obviously to, to, to build businesses, grow communities, and foster relationships between its residents and its, uh, and its government. And you know, the ways to do that are actually investing into the people, uh, whether it's infrastructure, not just hard infrastructure like roads and tele, telemarketing and um, networks, but also it's soft infrastructure, like it's culture and the people who are there. Giving back to the community, making sure to actually uh, you know, work with its uh, residents, whether it's small business owners, whether it's um, community leaders, whether it's its students, being able to actually build with its residents and grow together is the key. And, and we've got some great ideas coming up. You know, we really want to start a small business incubator with the city of Claremont, which will, which will essentially work with small business owners and our, um, our young, young adults, whether it's high school juniors, seniors, or even college freshmen, and kind of create a, a link and an apprenticeship program that'll essentially build jobs, build relationships, and um, build, um, build better relationships between our city government and our uh, small business owners. My opponent, she's done some great work, but like I was saying before, the city of Claremont needs community leaders and people who actually care about the community, people who are ever present and are actually involved. Um, like I said before also, I'm a, a resident Claremontonian and I've been there for so long. You know, Claremont is, I don't know anything else other than Claremont, you know, and Claremont needs somebody who actually loves the area they're in and is actually willing to fight for it and actually, actually involved. Yeah, and, and this is a big thing, especially with being so close to the green swamp, making sure that their access to the lakes is uninterrupted and is as easy as possible. You know, making sure that our boat ramps are properly funded and put in the correct places, making sure that we're working with Lake County, um, with the Lake County system and with the county commissioners in order to have things properly funded. Just making sure that we're having a better overall dialogue and connection between our boaters and our swimmers and other people who use the lakes and our city government. You know, when, the, when the government is actually being accessible and transparent, there's a much better relationship and, and it shows. Um, and we can definitely improve on that and do a better job of it. Yeah, and it's, it's an incredibly important important aspect and area, especially since we're a city that's growing so much. We're about to hit 40,000 people maybe in the next year or so. Um, for me, the biggest thing is, and I'm actually going to uh, rewind a little bit back to planning and zoning. It's, it's about smart, smart growth, it's about smart planning, it's about making sure that when 
developers are coming into our city. They're putting, being put and being led to places that are actually, uh, actually made for growth, not just jamming everything in there and just hoping that it works together because, oh, it's a quick cash grab or we can just make money off of it. You have to say no eventually, you know, and you can't stop growth, but you can be better prepared for it. And it's time for us to be more proactive than it is for us to be reactive. First, thank you so much for having me here. I really do appreciate it. And like I said before, you know, I'm a longtime Claremont resident and I, I love the city so much, you know. Without a sense of caring, there can be no sense of community. And I've definitely felt the caring arms wrap around myself and my family by this community. And that's why I want to give back. Um, I'm ready to bring an accessible leader, a transparent board, and somebody who's willing to work for your vote. And that's why I'm asking you to vote EBO on November 5th.